Hey everybody, uh, well, it's great to be with you. You, you know what? I miss people. <laughs> I was watching a concert the other night and I remember going to some incredible concerts. Part of the concert experience is the music that you're hearing, the artists that you're going to enjoy, but then the other part is enjoying it with other people. Um, that corporate experience, there's something about that. And uh, so I wish I could be there with you in person. Uh, I, I do miss people. I miss the corporate worship experience the way it used to be, and, and we'll get back there. But I am thankful for technology and thankful for this opportunity to do what I hope to do today, which is encourage you. I love words. The word encourage is powerful. It's made of two pieces. The word courage, which is, it's not the absence of fear. It's the unwillingness to relent in the face of fear, right? Uh, where, where you have something bigger inside of you than what's in front of you, right? Um, that's courage, right? But then the prefix en, I love this prefix. It means to make, cause, or create. So that when you encourage someone, you're helping them to make the courage that life takes. And life takes courage. Love takes courage. Service takes courage. And faith makes courage. So I want to encourage you today. So if I had to give a, a, a title to my brief presentation, it would simply be the punctuation of love. Love's punctuation, the, the punctuation of love. Uh, let's pray. Um, God, we're doing this through technology, um, but I know that you know how to reach out and touch and encourage, period. Um, you're omnipotent, you're omnipresent, you're omniscient. So you know how to do it. You're everywhere and you have the power to deliver. So God, I just ask that, that you would just confirm, affirm and encourage today uh, so that as we go back to serve and to love, we will do it powered by your spirit, which is the, the best source of power. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, my strength and redeemer. Amen. I, you know, I'll be honest with you. Uh, my father was a minister for 50 years. And so I grew up in church and I saw the sausage made. And I was like, I don't want to make sausage. <laughs> right. I, I, I did not want to do this. I, I squirm because I am from amongst what I call the crusty Christians, the ones that are rough around the edges. Uh, I am a perfect candidate on a daily basis for the grace of God, right? Um, but there's something in my heart that does want to throw light and, and to encourage people. And I remember watching my father in ministry. It was hard. It was hard. It, it, it was lonely. Um, there was one thing he was stuck on, though, the love of God. My father believed in love um, above all things. You know, he had all these degrees and he had studied all these different things. But when it all came down to it, he just kept telling me, he said, son, if ever <laughs> you are drawn into the space, share the love of God. And given where we are in the world right now, Nothing could be more relevant or needed than love. It's a singer-songwriter by the name of Burt Bacharach who said, what the world needs now is love, sweet love. It's the only thing that there's just too little of. So I start here today. God loves you. God loves you, right? God loves you. The, the whole of scripture is really a love story. 
the life of Christ is love in action. The, the love of Christ is made manifest when you see him on the cross, risen again. All of that, he endured the cross for the joy that was set before him. He loved, he served. But, but love was, is the animating, activating, motivating force behind everything that God does. God is love. And so God loves you. God loves you. That's a hard bit to swallow for people who have struggled being loved and giving love. We're in a world that, you know, like Tina Turner said, what's love got to do with it? But love is the predicate. It is, it is the thing. Uh, there's, there's no greater wisdom than love. In fact, love is wisdom. And if you don't get this right, nothing is right, right? If this isn't true, then nothing else matters. But if this is true, and it's true, then nothing else matters. And when I think about where we are in the world today, uh, we've got a pandemic. We have economic collapse. And then we have pandemonium. We have social unrest in this in in this nation, right? We're the ones. We're the world superpower. We got it all figured out. No, we don't. We are as much in need of God's grace as we have ever been. How do you fix those problems? What would you use to solve all of the above? And I I found it ridiculous to even think. In fact, one day I was on the radio and I, and I, and I put this out on the air and, and people started calling me saying, yeah, love is nice in theory, but that's not practical. It's not. Uh, the book of James, first chapter, and then this verse. It basically says, if you really fulfill the royal law, <laughs> that says, love your neighbor, look at that, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. <laughs> You're doing well. Love? Love. Love's punctuation. Here's the problem. We question it. See, for a lot of people, there's a question mark there. It's a twofold question mark. Number one, you haven't accepted the fact that you are profoundly and unconditionally loved. You haven't received it. And so if you haven't received the love of God, if, you, if it's still a question in your mind, if, if it's still a question in your heart, that's a bit of a problem because if it's a question in your heart, then the idea of love making itself manifest is questionable. Christ came to get rid of the question mark. He came to declare his love for you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him, and that's a wide path right there. Whosoever, yeah, that means you. Whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. What love. What love. Imagine this. If there's no question about whether or not God loves you, and there's no question about whether or not God loves the people you are called to serve, then there will be no question about you serving them well. I love um, the first word of the Lord's Prayer is one of my favorite. Our. <laughs> the, the reason I love the first word of the Lord's Prayer so much is because immediately it empties you of self selfishness and it makes us brothers and sisters. 
don't you think with the pandemonium pandemic and everything else, if we viewed each other's each other as brothers and sisters, it would change the way we process all of that. When love has a question mark in front of it in your life, everything's questionable. What Christ did on the cross was so that we could remove the question and move from love. Like, is love enough? It, it, think about 1 Corinthians 13 and all of the virtues there. I promise you this, if we served from the platform of those values, love could do what love does. Love is a shapeshifter. Love knows what to be and how to be to deliver the most powerful result. So number one, you got to get rid of, get, you got to get rid of the questions. Number one, number, number two, love, period. What we really need is for this to be settled. I, I love the, the words in the preamble to the Declaration of Independence. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, among these life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness. What I love about that phrase is self-evident that self-evident this is the definition i love this definition not needing to be explained or demonstrated semicolon obvious mm. when you get to the place where god's love is self-evident where it is obvious to you where it's settled fact in your life. Love. God loves me, period. I love people, period. Love your neighbor as yourself, period. When you get to the place where it's settled, you can serve. When, when it's just a fact, when it's just period, done. And by the way, that verse says you shall love your neighbor. It's an imperative. You, if you have any contracts, um, when it says shell in the contract, uh, I love that I've looked at a lot of contracts in my life, right? A lot of entertainment contracts. And a lot of them will have a payment clause. And it says you shall be paid this on that date. And I love the word shall because it means <laughs> the money's coming, right? Period. Period. My prayer for you is that the love of God would become a settled fact in your life and, and that it would become a settled fact in your life that God loves everyone, every person that you've been called to serve, period. Number three, love, exclamation point, emphatic. Here's what happens. When, when God comes into your life in a meaningful way, he removes the questions, he removes the doubt that hinders you from serving at a high level. And he makes it a settled fact in your life. So you go from that crooked question mark to a powerful period. I love God, period. He loves me, period. I love you, period. You love me, period. When you get to that settled place, something starts to, to happen inside of you. It moves from just being a declared fact to be, you know, to becoming something that you want to exclaim. The exclamation point is love. You start to radiate it. You start to proclaim it. You start to take it on, not only as something you know, but something you are, you stand up, you declare it, you put love on people in a way that is undeniable. It is declarative. It is not just something inside of you. It's something that's flowing out of you by the grace of God, by his spirit. That battery is in your back. Love, 
for where we are in the world right now with the, with the racial problems we have in this country? Love, 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 right? The financial problems, can, can, can love fix money problems? If it is the predicate, you make better decisions, love. The pandemic, uh, look, if we're brothers and sisters and collaborators, we will work together toward a solution because love commands that. And I'll tell you where I, where I got this in closing. The occasion was my parents' 60th wedding anniversary. My parents were in their 80s by this time and they were, they were coming to that transition point in their life. And um, my mother was there and we were all celebrating together and we were all talking about my mother. And my mother loved the praise of her children. I guess any mother would. And um, so we all, you know, five children, we all kind of go through all the things that our mother meant to us, the love that she gave us. We tried to put an exclamation point on it. It was about two hours, a lot of talking. And then finally, my father, who was a man of very few words, even as a preacher, he wouldn't go beyond 27 minutes. Um, we call him to the podium to say a word. And so I was emceeing the event. My father was on a walker. He had a red one. My, my mother had a green one, minivan, red, Ferrari. So my father, who had Parkinson's, shakes his way up to his feet. And then he kind of shuffles to the podium and he grabs the podium. And he's trying to control his shaking because he's embarrassed about his condition. There are a lot of people in the world that are embarrassed about their condition, right? And God loves you emphatically. And I said, Dad, in all these years of life and all these years of marriage, what have you learned? And my father just paused for a second. And he said these words. He said, remember, love is the answer to everything. And then he got in his Ferrari and went back to his table. And I don't think he said much of anything the rest of the evening. But catch this. Right before he passed away, I started having a series of conversations with him. And I said, seven words? Why did you say that? And he said, Halloran, the most intractable problem in the world was man's separation from God. And an omnipotent God had all the resources of, of, of omnipotence at his disposal. And he said, son, what did God use to fix a broken world, to redeem his creation unto himself? He said, for God so loved the world, he used love. And my father said, if love could fix a broken world, what can't it fix? We are called to serve. You can't serve for status. You can't serve to make a name for yourself. You can't serve out of the wrong motivation. It just, it goes haywire. But when love becomes the motivating, animating, activating force inside of you, when, when the question is gone, you know that you are loved by God and you know that you are called to love God, to love yourself and to love God, when that becomes a settled fact, then you are overwhelmed with the power of that love and you have to proclaim it. And the way you proclaim it is not with words, it's through service. That's how we love the world, is by putting an exclamation point on God's love in community. Love, love, love.